It may be December, but there are still quite a lot of things to see in the garden. So uh, we'll go and have a look. Now, I see in the distance here, a beautiful autumn colour starting on this spindle. Euonymus halatus. It's come from Japan, Korea, northern China, Dately Hardy. It can almost be considered a native, it's grown so so widely in this country. Drawing back, this is a form called compactus because it really is quite a compact and rather dense bush compared with the non-compact form. The name Alatus means winged because you may see on this uh, older stem the beginnings of a sort of corky wings along along the stem. Much more marked in uh, a similar one called Euonymus felomanus, which I showed you in a previous video. I see my winter camellias are starting to flower. And I must say this uh, bush of Hugh Evans is absolutely massive. Goes all the way around the corner here. And although the flowers are only single, and quite small. All together they make quite a a show. Above it are the first flowers of uh, sparkling burgundy. A deeper pink. And the beauty of all these winter flowering camellias is that they are scented and the scent wafts about as you pass by on a still day. Backed by the uh, lovely yellow colours now of the cutleaf beach behind, I want to show you this Korean fir, which is normally uh, grown for its brilliant blue cones, which are very decorative, but the needles are generally quite uh, flat. However, in this version, as you can see, they're curled back so that you actually have the benefit of the silver backing, which is very decorative in the winter. This is a German variety. It's a slow growing conifer. Um, about uh, 15, 20 centimeters a year, six to nine inches. So uh, to have grown to the three meters that this tree is, has taken about 18 years. Introduced by Horstman's nursery in 1979, so fairly recent introduction. 
but a good tree for all round your interest. Backed by the wonderful Miss Canthus Cosmopolitan Fuchsia Cordifolia, as I used to know it, now Fuchsia splendens Var Cordifolia is flowering away, braving December weather. Cordifolia, because of its large heart shaped leaves. Its bunches of flowers are a deep ready pink with somewhat green tips to the petals. Now in December, the Coria Peachy cream, Australian shrub, is now coming into its own. I think it's absolutely gorgeous. You've seen it before and you'll see it again, no doubt, as it keeps on flowering right through the winter into the spring. And you can see, I think you can see, how many buds there are still to come. A lovely thing. I was coming along behind here and I saw the common plant of Fatsia japonica flowering. This is a member of the Aurelia family, several of which we'll just have a look at. This one I can't get over the sort of pristine whiteness of the flowers when they've opened. This and other members of this late flowering family are very useful for insects because they're a late source of pollen and nectar, as is our common ivy, which is uh, another member of the Aurelia family. Here we have the stand of um, the Chinese rice paper plant, Tetrapanax which is another member of the Aurelia family, flowering away, rather invasive. Nevertheless, makes quite an impressive stand when they're all flowering like this. Yet another member of the Aurelia family here, Pseudopanax arboreus it's called. Uh, here's another member of the Aurelia family, this time not so bobbly more spiky flowers. This is Schiffler de la Veille. It's been flowering for a good five or six weeks. Unusually for this part of the world, we've had some snow and temperatures around freezing. 
it always amazes me that the uh, bits under the trees are protected. We have got um, a kind of a small microclimate under each of these trees and the snow has melted and there's no frost. Exciting for the dogs. But there's something I want to show you just down here. Now here's an interesting phenomenon I <laughs> haven't noticed before. <coughs> if you see the, uh, the roots <coughs> of this black walnut tree, just goes up there. See, they're outlined in frost. Isn't it extraordinary? I suppose it's because the ground itself is still a bit warm, which means that the elevated bits of the root are cooler. Yes, I've never seen that before. Anyway, coming through here, what I really wanted to show you was the wonderful and amazing fruiting of my evergreen Euonymus. Euonymus Marianthus. It started off as uh, two plants and their roots are, uh, original stems are down there because I was told that in fact if you wanted decent fruiting on Euronymus you should plant two of them together and preferably different clones, which would encourage fruiting. It's certainly been a wonderful fruiting year for it. It's always interesting to see the, the, the red seeds after the capsules are split. Right, back we go. All the frost has disappeared and it's warmed up again. Well, all that remains for me to say is thank you very much for watching my videos through the year. It's been a great pleasure to share the garden with you and I wish you all a happy Christmas and a happy and prosperous New Year. So bye for now.